Hello and welcome to episode two or episode one, depending on whether you managed to watch our last episode before it was kicked <laughs> off YouTube for spreading medical information agreeing with the JCB. I anyway, not an issue, <laughs> anyway, issue. Let's not go there. Today we will be discussing climate change, we will be discussing uh, the reclaiming of our fishing communities, we will be discussing the Melbourne madness and the protests going on in Australia and the draconian measures there, and finally they will all be taking the piss out of me about my temporary uncancelling for the role of Hunter Biden. Yeah! <laughs> Turn down on the age of reason, replaced by binding fires that burn wild across the region. For the wrong to rule, the good must just stand idly by. I am joined today by me to, sorry, Martin Daubney, <laughs> yeah. uh, who and Leo Kirst, <laughs> both of whom, I'm sad to say, are straight white males. Uh, and hopefully I, I'm actually a gender queer non-binary. Okay, as, well, I mean, that's obvious, with size 15 feet. And to provide us with a little bit of class, the ever wonderful <laughs> Peruvian Scotswoman, Alice Grant. Now, before we get going, I shall help myself to a Diane, and uh, we'll, we'll, We'll get going. So I think we should start with climate change. And what should we say about climate change? Who should we start with? Leo, you've never joined us before. You go first. Well, like the Extinction Rebellion were out uh, blocking motorways with the with the ascent, with the, the actual help of the police. The police were helping them to stop traffic. Yeah. Uh, and they've changed tactics now. Now that somebody uh, has actually they didn't die without a life changing uh, injury, they were they were being taken to hospital. Um, and they were delayed by the Extinction Rebellion protesters and, and the police had a, had a stroke. and the police yes, and um, so they're, they're there to protect and serve and instead they, they blocked the roads and uh, and somebody sadly had a stroke and is now is now paralyzed that's a, that's a life-changing so injury and yeah Extinction Rebellion I don't know their, their tactics uh, wouldn't take on in Scotland I mean number one we, we're not too worried about climate change because the climate in Scotland needs to change it's <laughs> like we're not worried about rising sea levels the whole of scotland's like made out of mountains we saw this coming you know what i mean i know countries like bangladesh they built it it's all very low and close to the sea level scotland we're smarter a lot of forethought <laughs> made out of mountains and their tactics the extinction rebellion's tactics wouldn't work in scotland i saw them uh, i saw them on the news uh, they're stopping buses they're gluing their hands to buses like that in trafalgar square so the buses couldn't drive off and take people to work or whatever seen as bad by the left these days so that, that wouldn't work in Glasgow. If you glued your hands like that to a bus in Glasgow, within about 30 seconds, somebody would come up behind you, nick your mobile phone and pump you in the arse. Like that. <laughs> Why? That bus would move. Pump you in the arse? Why? Pump you in the arse with what? <laughs> You're so, come on, you went to private school. Yeah, so that's exactly hence, hence why I mentioned it. <laughs> right, can we go? Can we have some civility, please? Because come on, we, we really must have some civility. There's a lady in the room. Yes. Oh. Sorry, I know that. I know that's dreadfully I'm, I'm patriarchal. I'm scandalised. <laughs> um, Peruvian Scotswoman. Well, well, well. My generation seemed completely and utterly indoctrinated and radicalised by the whole climate change movement. Um, but there are very few of us who, who can see it for what it is, really, which is just um, another way to kind of um, impoverish the already mm. poor working class people of this nation and to drive more money up to the top to the elites. And that is really my, my biggest problem with all these so-called solutions, which are designed to, to fix the problem, which obviously cannot be fixed by us. And, um, and even if it could be, the UK is only accountable for what one percent of yeah. all yeah. emissions worldwide. I mean, this is a joke. China build a China build. Yeah, they, they keep going with their coal fire. Although um, we've coal -fired exported, parts. we've exported our emissions to places like India and China. So they do our manufacturing. Mm. So they dig the the coal and build these dirty uh, generating plants, and, and they do our manufacturing. So our emissions have just been offshore, outsourced, like like our, a lot of our jobs. So we just feel better about ourselves. <laughs> yeah. It's all about feeling better. Dorbo. You know, what this reminds me of, and I hate to mention the B word so early, but, but Brexit. Um, I spent oh a lot Lord. of time in 2019, you know, meeting That's fans. That's our car turning off. Yeah. <laughs> See you, <laughs> Ash. <laughs> <laughs> well, I spent my time in, in 2016, right the way through 2019, as Alice did, you know, you were a great Brexit campaigner, talking to ordinary people. Yeah. And let me tell you this, I must have knocked on about 20,000 doors and I asked people across the East Midlands and the West Midlands, what's important to you? Nobody said climate change. Nobody does Nobody, it? literally nobody. Now that's not to say it's not important, but in the day-to-day -day lives 
of putting bread on the table for your family, of staying warm in the winter, of being able to eat and provide. People in the middle classes, Boris Johnson in New York, the upper classes, the political class, they're obsessed with saving the planet. The working classes just want to save their families. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that is not to say that they are short-sighted, ignorant, little-minded. All the, all the insults that have been thrown at them since mm. the Brexit referendum and before is because they are just much more concerned with surviving. Mm. And I really, really do think this is a new class war. And it seems to me, Boris Johnson said this thing, it's easy being green, it's, it's Kermit the Frog ridiculous comment. Because Kermit said, it ain't easy being green. And Boris said, well, it is. Well, it is easy being green. If you can afford a 70 grand car, a 15 mm. grand boiler, mm. and you just pay all your taxes to go on holiday anyway. Mm. It's easy to be green if you're wealthy. Mm. If you're poor, it's going to be a nightmare. And I really, yeah. really think it's going to be a huge huge political fault line in the next general election. I think it's one the reclaim party should really stake it, its heart in. Well, we're, we're doing work on it, aren't we? And we'll have, yeah. some, we'll have something to say for about COP26. Yeah. I completely agree with you. All of these ideological driven, ideologically driven policies yeah. disproportionately affect the poor. Mm. Always have done, always will do. But for reasons of um, balance, because we've got to have some, there is man-made climate change. That, that yeah. is that is agreed. Well, but there is well. okay. <laughs> okay, give me a second. It is it's tempting to be. It's just, it's just that you can't get any funding to be climate sceptical. So we, the, there is no <laughs> balance. <laughs> okay, there's no okay, balanced okay. debate. If you want to That's do a paper thing. on the climate, you'll have to say we're all about to burn and the doomsday cultists will come out. You know, people want to do it. But I think we should care about the environment. But I also I think that people do, think do, do care about the environment. I think we do, but I think we should also be 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 analysing the science and all the scientists, not just the ones funded by the UN <laughs> mm. and who are approved by them and who are on the climate change commissions. And I think there's there's a lot of really interesting um, research to be done as to to what extent is climate change anthropogenic or perhaps there's some things that we actually don't have control over, such as the climate of the Earth, which is mostly mm. controlled by the sea, of course, because this, the Earth is 70 percent sea. Sea is, the, is, is what drives CO2 levels in the, in the atmosphere. So how on earth could, could we have such a big effect? But, you know, obviously, um, I do I do um, think that protecting the environment is something we should definitely um, yeah, it's be good, concerned but I, with. But I don't know what anthropogenic means. What does it mean? Caused by man. Caused by man. Okay, yeah. anthropogenic, yes. And no, anthropogenic. Yeah. And, 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 and non-binary <laughs> people, and <laughs> new <germs. laughs> Um, but my kids are much more climate uh, aware and environmentally aware yeah. than I ever was. We've got recycling bins. You know, I think we should we should be a bit more okay because yeah. we get to the bit where I go, "Where's hope?" Mm. And I go, I go, I go, the hope, the hope, the hope is in the is in the next generation, yeah. and and also giving people a full, honest debate about it yeah. instead yeah. of the doomsday cultists winning every time. Go and insulate your own house. Yeah. I think there's a verse in the Bible about that, mm. you know, <laughs> about the uh, the log insulation in my neighbour's <laughs> 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 Insulate thine own eye before thou insulate thy neighbour's house. Anyway, yeah. It's a very good point about the the, the um how hypocritical they are, yeah. really, that they're shouting down to, to the working mm. class. So you have to change oh, yeah. your way of life on this. They can't, you know, not, not everyone, as you said, Martin, can afford these ridiculously new expensive boilers and yes. and um, If you can, brilliant. Pumps. You know, if, yeah. you, if, you, if you live in Surrey or Richmond <laughs> and you vote Liberal Democrat and you want to spend £85,000 on mm. making yourself greener, tickety-boo. Mm. <laughs> God bless you. All power to you. Yeah. But go to that somebody in Ashfield or Mansfield, they'll throw a brick yeah. in your head. Yeah. Think about the so poor elderly. Elderly. At least they wouldn't pump you in the arse like <laughs> they, they, yeah. they would in Glasgow. Right <laughs> it's much better. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a great article I want on everyone out there watching Reclaiming Me by Matt Ridley. Brilliant, Matt Ridley. Uh, he's a guy um, who's, um, Matt, I'm going to hold you to this because you said you'd come on this show in a few weeks' time and I want you in this studio. He's written a brilliant article in the Daily Mail this week. Please have a look at it. We'll put it on the links. It's called Power Mad. And he very reasonably says that we are now addicted to this, this intellectual cul-de-sac of pursuing wind power and solar power. And we've axed old King Coal mm. and we need to um, look more to nuclear um, and, mm. more, and more, a more balanced energy supply. And dare we say it, fracking. Yeah. America, before Biden got hold of the country, was gas self-sufficient, thanks to fracking. We could do the same here if we just stop these morons that are blocking the motorways and tying themselves to, to drill bits. Yeah. If they stopped running the agenda, mm. and sensible people did, 
we wouldn't be at Putin's mercy or the mercy of the wind when no. it decides to not be windy. Mm. Well, actually, we were in Durham and it was really windy and they still weren't turning around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should play some of that footage in. Which was weird. I was, I was got yeah. out there, I was like, they're like, I can't, I'm not going for my Geordie accent. No, <laughs> my <laughs> Geordie accent. I'll, I'll save it for your yeah, um, yeah. June Mummery impression. Okay. But we were walking around <laughs> the north of, of yeah. England uh, when we went yeah. up to Durham to look at the Sabin Cast coal mine that they were closing because yeah. it made the woke people happy. And um, it was really windy. Yeah. And I was like looking at the um, wind turbines and going, why aren't they turning around? Mm. <laughs> so I'm still, I want answers to those. These to are the questions. Off. Are they being paid to switch off? Well, many of them have because of um, cable problems and they can't store the energy. So. Well, well, the guy that we were with, yeah. he said, well, most people don't understand this, and I didn't. He said, they can't store any power. Yeah. They can only generate power that's used. So I think, like, three of these things were going around. He goes, yeah, that's powering all of West Durham, and the rest of them aren't needed. So... <laughs> So I thought I'm glad they built them all. It's such a mess. <laughs> so, so what a relief! What yeah. a good use of money. Yeah, I mean, this this is the thing. I mean, we need to to plan for a lower carbon future, but it needs to be done in a, in a sensible and sustainable way. At the moment, it's not sustainable. The wind stops blowing for a couple of weeks. All of a sudden, a cable uh, goes in the frets under under the channel, so we can't get uh, energy from France. And all of a sudden, we're completely dependent on Russian gas, so they can mm -hmm. spike the prices, they can restrict yeah. supply, and also use it as a geopolitical bargaining chip. Uh, to increase their their uh, you know in the war against Ukraine, yeah. so uh, you know all of a sudden it's become a, an incredibly geopolitically damaging mm -hmm. uh, tool, and the the cost is being borne by these uh, working class communities, mm -hmm. each of which pays. I mean, whatever your energy bill is, uh, even when it's low, you're still paying a twenty five percent uh, green tariff on yeah. top of it. They say it's more stuff. more than twenty five percent. More than twenty five percent. Yeah. yeah, but it's going to be back to the nineteen seventies. It really, really is. You know, back back in those days, having a car going on a foreign holiday, or even deciding to turn your central heating on was a luxury. Mm. And we're going back to those mm. days in the name of progress, in the name of net zero. I think it's suicide from Tory party. Yes. Well, we'll get at least Especially we'll when we look around the world and we see China, who are just, apparently the UN rules don't apply to China. No. I mean, it's just, it's really, really Well, odd. it's because we're, <laughs> we're self-flagellating all the time, but at least we get to eat yeah. plates full of locusts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Instead not of eating indigenous bags. Instead of <laughs> not eating bugs. No. Okay, Alice, what... I'll stick to my steaks. How, Thank you. How do you like your steak? Um, I like medium rare. Very good. What's your... Um, what's, uh, any hope to be flung out into the world from this climate debacle? You know, it was... It's, hope is looking very slim, sadly. Yeah. I mean... Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to, like, the, the climate change is going to outpace even the most, yeah. uh, even the most worried, uh, frantic scientific predictions, and we're going to see incredible temperature rises in Scotland, and we can open vineyards instead of turnip fields, <laughs> and just swap the kilts for, for uh, thongs, and it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> that certainly would be good for you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any hope for you, Martin? Um, I, I hope that the, this, whole, this whole government and this whole political class, which is weathered to this idea mm. in its entirety, there's no voice of opposition. No. I hope that a new political party, which might be led by a really handsome former actor. Um, have you heard of one, Lauren? Yeah, he's called Paul Better Than Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's going to be a political awakening yeah. Yeah. and there can be room for an alternative voice. As he says, this is the emperor's new clothes. We can't mm -hmm. afford it. We're all going bankrupt. We're freezing our what's it's off. We can't afford to eat. <laughs> we want to vote for someone new. And that guy's Lawrence Fox. And that's Great. <laughs> they've wrung as much as they can yeah. out of COVID. So now they've got to bring <laughs> through the doomsday call. Fresh it's disaster. Crazy. I mean, do you think that Boris is right now in New York lecturing about climate change, all this whole, while we're seeing headlines about fuel poverty. Mm. And mm. it's just, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. Mm. I, I remember growing up, you, the doomsday cultists, you see guys outside Woolworths on the high street you know, with a big sandwich board and crazy eyes and a big beard saying the end of the world is nigh. And they were the crazy angry or curse his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and now those guys are running the fucking now country. Those guys are making the policy. And everybody's listening to them. It's like Twitter. Yeah. Twitter is not good. <laughs> Um, currently <laughs> trending on Twitter. Um, right, all right. Um, it's now time to bring in a, you know, definitely a dissenting voice in um, in in our next in our piece, Dobbs. Who is it? Who's going to give us a little speak now? Well, in our weekly episode, our regular June Slater, Slated, talked about gas boilers and the working class in a usual way, like a like a battle axe through the skull.
two months of being locked down, we can't go to our favourite restaurant, we can't go to our favourite bar, we can't go and meet our friends, we can't go dancing, we can't go and buy food properly without queuing up in the cold with a mask on. We've had all that. We can't even book a holiday without endless paperwork, taking drugs and testing to get back in the country you formerly left. You're fit and healthy, remember? There's nothing wrong with you, that's why you booked a holiday. Not only have we had all that, Boris now tells us just in time for autumn that we can have some new boilers that we don't need. We're going to all have to go over to electric boilers. What a good idea, not. Every heating engineer that I've spoken to has told me how they're not even capable of getting your existing radiators up to the temperatures they currently do. Looks like we're going back to my dad's old army coat on the bed then for winter. It's not good for the poor, it seriously isn't, and we've had enough of this claptrap. Unfortunately, the more I see Boris hugging people like Joe Bedridden and congratulating Justin Trudeau for getting in again, what are you doing, Canada? Um, the more I worry. My backside's going sixpence, threatening bit, sixpence, threatening bit, because I just wonder what this government is coming up with next. Your boilers are a stinking idea. The national grid can't cope. Wait till cars fire up. They can't cope with them either. But that's for another video. Boris, stick your boilers where the sun don't shine. It's not good news. It's crucifying the poor. Joe Bedridden. I mean, that's a good one. That's a keeper. It's an absolute yeah. keeper, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Um, Alice couldn't roaming report this week, which we were very upset about. So we had to send out someone useless. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Um, I don't know. Me. Yes. Yeah, it was me. So, yeah, it was a very emotional week this week. And as far as June Mummery, who we, of course, travelled to go Lower and stuff. meet. Um, Lois off the Queen of the Fisheries, former colleague of mine as an MEP, and keep and peeled soon for an announcement about June Mummery and the Reclaim Party. Um, she's very, very taken by a certain somebody rolling a cigarette as we speak. Lawrence, you know who that is? Dorbs. Yeah, I don't. You. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she's more. She's taken by you. I'm taken by Paul Lines. Yeah, I think he's he's got better hands. He's just hot. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, it was very emotional. We went up to um, Lowestoft because our vibe, yeah. because obviously you get censored by Twitter and you open a newspaper and it says Lawrence Fox is a Nazi racist paedophile and sort of <laughs> that, in that order or That's other orders. Terrible. So we, what we do is we just pop in the car yeah. and we drive over to places and we meet people and we talk, talk to them and we find out. And we sat through a CFAS, which is uh, about the fishing stocks meeting with Paul and mm. June mm. and... Uh, you know, and their their appeal, and it was ju uh, I, I could understand it in minutes what mm -hmm. they were talking about, and they just they were just met with like, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, and they, these are the people are actually you know when we're talking about the environment, it's mm -hmm. genuine environmentalists, yeah, you know, yeah. really yeah. care about the environment, so it was very very moving to be there, and these communities have been totally ignored, and and let down. So Dorbs went out to watch the. They drove their fishing boats down and, yeah. they, and they did a few circuits of Parliament. Good on you. We're about right behind you. I am here today with June Mummery, former MEP colleague of mine, a fisherman's friend. In fact, I think in a former life she's probably a mermaid. Paul Lyons from the Lowest Off Fisherman's Alliance. You're also with them too. We're in Westminster today. Fellas, what's the event? Well, we're here specifically to lend support to our South Coast colleagues. On the East Coast, we had the might of the Dutch fishing fleet fishing with electricity. It wiped our fishery out and it's slowly recovering. But in the channel, the Dutch are now turned their vessels over to fly shooting, which is a method of using a lot of rope and a lot of power. It's wiping that fishery out. The government over there are after building a sustainable fishery for British fishermen with unfettered access by the Dutch fishing fleet and the French fishing fleet, it isn't going to happen. They're lying. They lied to us. We were meant to be taking back control to build a sustainable fishery for future generations. There won't be any fish left if they don't wake up and do something. They've got the power to stop this. They either got to cap the horsepower, cap the size of these boats, or ban the method in its entirety. But 
the trouble with Bannon's method in his entirety is it'll affect a lot of other people, not the culprits who are doing the damage. June. So there are other fishermen here today from New Avon as well, and we've got a flotilla of boats arriving shortly. What's the mood amongst British fishermen about the Brexit deal and this lot over there? Well, the mood is they're absolutely deflated. Um, there are fishermen coming today. A lot haven't come because obviously they are deflated and they've just had enough. And what is the point? You know, I never ever dreamt that I would be back standing here outside the House of Lies again. We did not take back full control of our waters and the resource we were lied to. So here we go again, we're back where we were at the start. Well guys, the boats are about to come down the river. Yeah, um, can we expect someone like Bob Geldof to turn up again? If he oh, does, I love so, I yeah. so. Well, I've got a slogan to cover this. That's, that's our fish, that's our seas, and our future. And that's what we're here today, to make this work. To try and wake the house of the sleepers up to realise that there's people out there that rely on that ocean and they should be representing their true interests, not just trading it away because it's insignificant. I hate being called insignificant, Martin. You know, I mean, in actual fact, in the last war, fishermen played a vital part in keeping the sea lanes clear of mines. Yeah. Then people that are laid to rest in that cemetery, they weren't insignificant. They were very, very, very popular people. And they've done a really good job. They forget that. trying to make is absolutely wonderful mate. Very emotional. I'm Neil Whitney, uh, owner of a 12 metre trawl of our New Haven. I'm up here today to support everybody else. We're trying to get these fly shooters and these big factory ships banned from the channel because they're just wiping everything out and pushing us all out of business. It's getting really hard to make a living now. And if they don't do something, this lot don't pull their finger out of their arse. We won't be here in a couple of years' time. The fishing industry yeah, is dying very quickly. It needs to be sorted out. It's not sorted out pretty quick, and there's going to be no local fishing community, and everyone's going to be put out of business. It needs to be stopped, and it needs to be stopped now. Well, there you go. Um, I'm going to throw this one to Dorbs because it's a particular area of passion for him, and I'm a beginner, and I'm learning about this stuff. Yeah, it was it was a real choker in a way, you know, to see June Mummery and Paul Lizer. These are like, they were like kind of the very, very beginnings of, of the Brexit movement. And, you know, the fishermen were really treated as, as a terrible, terrible piece of collateral damage in this because taking back control of our waters was a primary key message. And Brexit was a brilliant idea that was delivered terribly by Boris Johnson. And the, the, the fishing communities were badly, badly let down. Um, it was a really interesting protest of the day because we, we saw unlikely bedfellows in people like Paul Lines, fishermen from, from New, Haven, New Haven, from Lowestoft, and they're all with these undergraduates from Greenpeace who are suddenly waking up to the fact that if you have enormous super trawlers from Holland and France just scouring the bottom of the oceans and ripping all of our fish out of the water and, and eviscerating those ecosystems, mm. That is environmental damage. Yeah, the EU has and, been an ecological disaster yeah, in terms uh, of fishing. And as Paul said, I said to him, why don't they care about this? And he said, because they can't see it. Mm. If they could see burned fields, if they could mm. see dead animals. Yeah, they can't see yeah, the like yeah. ocean forest being burnt down. Because that's yeah. what it is, like in these uh, waters, even, even the cold waters around the UK, uh, you get um, deep sea corals. Yeah. And uh, so they're an incredible um, you know, place where, where fish create a habitat for fish and undersea life and when they all get like knocked down i mean number one it's, it's decades before they regrow mm. if not hundreds of years mm. and, uh, and it just completely destroys all that environment mm. it's the same as clear failing rainforest yeah yeah what were you saying alice about the eu being a disaster for the environment well yeah it's been this way for decades um with their super trawlers just destroying um the ecosystems and and we've we know now that there's around 2,000 EU vessels still plundering our waters daily. 
Mm. And of course, fishing was a cornerstone of the Brexit mm. vote and was so important to so many of these fishing communities, mm. which have been decimated by all the regulations and the directives from the EU. Yeah. So um, it was very important to these people. I had the privilege as well of talking to many fishermen whilst on the Brexit um, campaign trail. And, and yeah, to, to, to know that they've been betrayed in such a way, treated as though their votes just didn't matter, as their communities didn't matter. I mean, these people have families mm. to feed and, yeah. and, we're, and we were promised that we would regain control of our waters. How many times did mm. Boris Johnson yeah. say, but, yes, uh, of course, fishing, fishing, Well, he's, fishing. Not, he's not renowned he's, for, I, I, he's uh, not renowned for telling the but truth, Boris. In, in, <laughs> in fairness, Europeans yeah. eat fish a lot more than us. We just eat the fingers. So the rest, <laughs> that's not true. The rest of the fish gets thrown back. <laughs> yeah, but the but the point is, you know, there'd be there'd be a huge potential for exporting. You know, yeah, there's I mean, so many. We're buying back our fish from Norway. Fish that yeah. was there was fish in our own waters. No. This is this is also about our territorial waters, about our, our sovereignty, and and how nothing has changed. In fact, things are getting worse with mm. the new. Treaty deal signed yeah. by Boris Johnson. That is such a sort of bureaucratic, yeah. systemic nightmare. The fact that Norway's mm. c coming over, catching our fish, yeah. and taking them back, back, and then we have to buy them. So they have to joke. be shipped back yeah. over. Well, we're getting our coal delivered from Australia yeah. because yeah. Yeah. We're, it's so it's, woke it's, that we're like, oh no, it's we must. Dirty coal. <laughs> it, no, it's not only is it dirty coal; it's mm. crap coal. Yeah, it's brown yeah. coal. Yeah, yeah. And, it and it's, oh, I can't deal with that. How virtuous we have to be at the expense of the environment. It's all dirty. You know, the Chinese power station. Yeah. building and just next to them they're building all the solar panels that we can yeah. put on our roofs <laughs> so we go oh you feel wonderful about it look at how wonderful and environmental yeah. we are we're it's so just... sorry we'll reduce our emissions to zero and then we'll decolonize <laughs> them as well and then we'll decolonize the fish who are also racist <laughs> and it's just like i can't cope okay so my hope from this is that we reclaim our fishing communities yeah and that's a real that's a real attainable goal mm. and, and i think We've been invited down there to, to go fishing with these boys, these girls. They they want us on the boats, and I don't mean you want to do that. Yeah. Um, I think you'd look great in a life jacket, Alice. <laughs> Leo, we could, we could always use you. That's, that's just everyday sexism. Yeah. <laughs> no, we could always use you as a surfboard uh, yeah. if, if all else went wrong. Well, he looks quite. He could be. He looks quite like a basking shark or a yeah. seal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they want us to go down there and... We'll um, go. We, can, we want to go everywhere and talk to, and talk to people. It's, yeah. fun, it's, it's fun going deep sea fishing as well because like, mm. they pull up all kinds of just mad random fish. Yeah. It's like going to the zoo. And <laughs> there's just, yeah, you see all this crazy stuff. But I, I think in terms of the hope and in terms of what I hope for the Reclaim Party, um, I, th I think we need to go Viking style without the pillaging and the rest of it. <laughs> but, 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 so, the, what, the one fun so, part. Right? <laughs> yeah. so you, want, you want us to get in some long boats, travel over the, in the other direction, Let's do it. and rape and pillage. No, <laughs> what's that gonna help the what, fishing what, communities? What, what I mean, I mean, um, the first Daubney was, was a Norman invader. I, I'm, really? Yes, I'm an immigrant, yeah. so throw me out of the room. What I mean is, let's take this country over from the coasts again. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah, well, go from the coast an and well, move in. From the, from, the, from the people that politicians are meant to look after. And they've shafted instead them. Of the, instead of sort of sitting around in wine bars drinking yeah. sort of vaguely pink Prosecco mm. yeah. going, oh, <laughs> darling. Yeah. Uh, the environment is an absolute, it's all over. I can't, this is all I can think about. And these Tarquin's <laughs> on the roof of a train at Shadwell as we speak. <laughs> yeah, well, precise. And these stories all fold into each other. So these are the areas that are having all the wind farms dumped on them off yeah. coast. Yeah. These are the areas. And they changed the migratory patterns of the fish, they Paul do. was saying. He said, they, he said where there were fish before, there were no fish now. Yeah. And it's like, where are the, well, why are you not speaking to these people who generation after generation yeah. after generation have sustained fish stocks? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be, it's like this guy, it's like the Fox hunting yeah. thing. It was decided out uh, in London. It was like let's throw a throw a little you know morsel to the left in London. Yeah. And it's like I lived in the countryside, and fox hunting was a mm. crucial part of the community. And it's mm. like no, you're done with it. Mm. And it, 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 I'm sick of Londoners telling yeah. other people how to live. I think it's boring. Yeah. And, so and we're Londoners telling people yeah. how to live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except Leo, who's Scottish, <laughs> and she's a Peruvian Scotsman <laughs> woman, but, but Scots person. <laughs> As far as those communities go, it goes back to the previous story. Uh, they're some of the poorest communities in Britain. Mm. 
And they're the ones who are going to be facing the choice of eating or staying warm. Mm. They were shafted by Brexit. They're going to be mm. shafted by net zero. And I think they want real political change. And I think we need to go and be that change. Good. Let's do it. So now we're going to talk about what the holy hell is going on in Australia. And as Clive James said, and sorry for getting this wrong, it's not that Australia is just the half of Australia is descended from convicts. It's the half of Australia is descended from prison guards um, <laughs> we we've seen the most horrendous videos coming out of Australia we've seen they've shut down the construction workers are being forced into mandatory vaccination unless and or they'll lose their jobs and the atmosphere there is febrile mm. and um, uh, one wonders whether it's this sort of atmosphere is coming here if we're forced into the mandatory B word I'm not sure if I can say it and what the guidelines are if you're going to strip us off for having an opinion sorry YouTube um, anyway let's start with Alice the Peruvian Scotswoman <laughs> well I mean I think protests and, and is inevitable really when these restrictions have been so strangling and so suffocating on so many families and lives um, I'm with obviously the Australian people I think that it's very courageous of them um, to be protesting against the state but this is, we're living in times where basically communism is rife all over the West. Um, yeah, we must What about direct action? It. What do you feel about direct action? As in, so As in <laughs> the, the scenes of the police having to do a pretty smart about face as their uh, police cars were pelted and the wing mirrors were ripped off as they ran away before they could reorganise themselves and come out with their guns and their rubber bullets. That's and also... Exactly. When does it? When do you swap a rubber bullet for a real one? Mm. That's the other question. When it. So where do you? Where do you, Alice, stand on direct action? What do you feel about it? Do you feel? Well, I mean, the people are really angry, which is why this is happening, and they're angry because, of course, the state has been acting in a way that is just un unbelievable and unacceptable for so long. Um, obviously, I, I would love there to be to be more peace, but at this point, I, I completely understand why um, there's so much rage from the people. Um, it's awful. Yeah, it is awful. I agree with you 100%. Dobbs? You know, it seems to be a theme each week where I say, I, I don't really agree with political violence, <laughs> but... <laughs> and I completely stand behind these protesters mm. in Melbourne. And I, I wonder if it's about time we had a bit more of that over here as well. Um, because if you treat a population like a cage animal for long enough, in the end, they're going to buy it back. I think that's what's happened over there. Um, and actually, I must confess, rather like when the um, the commuters at Canning Town ripped that Canning Extinction Town, Rebellion, well, yeah, yeah so. Extinction Rebellion scrotes off the top of a train and gave him a bit of a shoeing. <laughs> I watched it more times than I've watched Gaza score against Germany. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the favourite things I've ever seen. It's like, oh my god! Have you watched it more times than you watched Hamza Yusuf's wheelchair? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wheelchair thing, it was just one of the best things I'd seen in years. It's just like. This is the public taking back control because mm. if the police don't police, in the end, the public do the job for them. It's yeah. called vigilanteism, and you know maybe that's what happens in the end. And there's an amazing piece of footage. I hope we can find it, where a full riot copper in, in, in his shield yeah, charges yeah. up to a guy who's a construction worker. Another part of the story is that construction workers have been told unless they have a one mandatory vaccine. One of those really vaccine, privileged, one of those really privileged yeah. elite construction workers yeah, from, right. the, from the elite mm. part of society. And again, it's, bad. it's the working class has been told, no jab, no job. And they said, do you know what, stuff you. Mm -hmm. And this, this copper runs up to a guy in a high-vis vest and he just stands there. Yeah, so we've He got doesn't to move. That's stand, so brave. stand your ground, resist. I mean, that's what we've got. Mm. Leo? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've spent a lot of time in Australia. I got, I got stranded there in the first lockdown. And it is weird because the Australian people are so down to earth and mm. so uh, so libertarian. Uh, but their, their government is very autocratic. And, you know, you get really high fines for just regular things like traffic offences. And uh, they've really they've really clamped down hard with, with the lockdown demonstrators. Uh, but what Australia is really a victim of its uh, closed borders policy. Because mm. they closed the borders, uh, everybody thought, oh, well, we don't need the vaccine. Jacinda Ardern's government in, in New Zealand, mm. which is seen as this super woke left-wing government, closed the borders, completely locked down the borders to stop anybody getting in. Mm. And they're seen as, as woke and left. How come, you know, Brexiteers, for example, yeah. you know, they say, oh, can we just restrict the borders a little, little bit? And everybody's like, oh, you racist. Well, you it's the I mean? same in America when they turn around and go, you need a, you need a vaccine passport to walk into a restaurant in New York. Mm. But when Pisaki, is that how mm. you, Jen Saki, Pisaki, I don't know how you mm. pronounce it, when was you, asked, um, right. 
<laughs> was asked whether um, you know uh, migrants coming freely passing across the border from uh, into Texas into Del Rio, Texas, yeah. whether they would need, and she was like, "Well, they're not going to be here for very long." And I'm like, going, "I'm not. I'm not sure that you actually you 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 you, you make that trip yeah. from yeah. Haiti mm. into America to go." Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. We should probably let, should we yeah. just do a long we weekend? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easter break. It, it, it's it's so inconsistent, morally inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. It's same. It's the same with the attacks on Kemi Badenoch and stuff. It's just it's morally inconsistent, mm. and it really undermines thinking and the way that we. That it undermines freedom of speech, which bothers me because. That's if, why they've created this mass psychosis. It's by just eroding logic and rationality. Exactly. At this point, mm. no one knows what they're doing. Mm. Yeah. What do you? Okay, so what's the hope, Alice? The hope. The hope. I think we're going to need a bit of some protest, some some Australian um, courage mm. here, perhaps. Soon. The, the hope is the hope is to is to, is to is resist. To, is to yeah. resist Just and to turn resist. up the dial. Yeah, if a law is immoral, you it's immoral. We have to no it. obligation to follow it. Yes. Mm. Mm. Hope any hope, Leo? Yeah, I hope I can get back to Australia to do the French festivals because uh, I can't deal with another UK winter. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. Same. An entirely selfish <laughs> hope on your behalf there, but <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, I don't think Leo quite has got the concept of hope. <laughs> <laughs> but it's absolutely fine. Dorbo? I, I really, you know, look up to these people for, for standing up for what they believe in. And again, echoes of, of the French Gilets Jaunes you know, movement. They're all wearing the high vis vests. Nice. In, in Australia, I, I hope we do that now. You know, we're going to protest, aren't we, again this weekend. We've much. been very pleasant for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems to have happened. And I, I just hope that this spirit of resistance grows in the UK and ordinary people come together and stand up and say no more. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard, though, because they're very clever in the UK at, at sort of giving a little and taking away at the same time. Mm. So the resistance movement finds it difficult mm. to find its feet. And also the government bought... Gaslighting the public. Yeah, and the government Turning bought the media. But so. I I, everything's sort of out of lockdown. I feel like lockdown and government mm. restrictions have pretty much completely ended. Well, they yeah. have, but the, but if you want to travel anywhere, no, even for international travel, you don't need a PCR. Yeah, you need a, you need to be double like jabbed. That, yeah, <laughs> it kind of hasn't been yeah, lifted. Yeah, no. yeah, but it's also the scam. <laughs> the fact that many poor families have not been able to get away at all just because of the sheer expense mm. of having to pay for PCR tests, the negative tests, but well, the yeah. quarantine. I mean, it's a vaccines are free. Yeah, but not yeah, but you, wants you know what they say. Vaccinated. You know what they say. But anyway, we can't. No, we got to stay off the vaccine. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I really want to talk about vaccinating it. children now. It's proof yeah. we're not free, but we can't. Yeah, because we, we get can't. taken down. So let's just that bit. We're not. You can probably guess the rest of it. We're not allowed an opinion on that one. Um, okay. <laughs> it's, um, well, no, we we are allowed an opinion. Everybody get as many vaccinations as you're told to by whoever tells you to do so. <laughs> the boosters every month. I have a booster a month. Yeah. Yeah. In Leo's case, four or five, yeah. one in either ear. And still wear your mask. Wear your mask. Because Especially you might still catch COVID. A cloth one. Um, <laughs> double, double. A lot. Double. Uh, but unless double you're rich and you're at the Met Ball and then yeah. only the slaves <laughs> and yes. servants yeah. should do it. Because we are living in that sort of world now. <laughs> right. Um, it's time to take the piss out of me. <laughs> Yay. I have. <laughs> what do you mean, yay? <laughs> well, you take the piss out of me, we take the piss out of each other, it's part of the programme. I don't take the piss out of you, Dorbs. Do you, do, do your. Um, do you your, too, so iconic. Do your, do, your, do your impression of a Suffolk fisherwoman, lady. Well, actually, <laughs> my, my June Mummery impression, I think, is really quite good. She went, I'm not having them telling me that I'm not allowed to go fishing in my waters. They're my waters. You come over here, this lot behind us, they want bloody hanging. <laughs> That's so you can see why <laughs> Ma Martin's first attempt at getting into Rada was unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> but we hope that he, his career as a uh, actor with a specialist who specialises in regional dialects will <laughs> will flourish uh, in the new optimistic post uh, lunacy era, which hopefully will come the around world before. World. AI takes us all over and we spend a thousand years of servitude to robots. <laughs> anyway, it's um, now time to mock me because um, I've been temporarily uncancelled uh, and I'm going to play Hunter <laughs> Biden in a little independent movie because obviously Hollywood wouldn't make that because they're too busy making films about genderqueer transsexual prostitutes who are in wheelchairs and 
<laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> that you know, seven, seven people watch. <laughs> um, so, and they get Oscars for. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna play that. And uh, I'm very, very excited about it. I would, I'm a bit nervous because I've got to um, try and do this job and the other job at the same time. And as much as you may think this job, it, it looks easy. That's just because we're really good at it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I will be going off on, uh, t I think about 25th of October to a secret location to, uh, to reveal the inner workings of Hunter Biden's life, which social media and all forms of the big tech tried to totally silence in the run-up to the 2020 election, to the point where the New York Post article revealing the secrets of Hunter Biden's laptop was, was not allowed to be shared on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Therefore, big tech are responsible in whatever way for affecting the American election. Polling was done immediately afterwards, which said, which uh, of Democrats, of uh, Biden voting Democrats, who said that if they'd seen that, a, a, a sizable percentage wouldn't have voted for him. Um, so yeah, that's me. I'm off to smoke crack in a bath, <laughs> lie in a bed with several prostitutes. Why would I ever give up acting? <laughs> <laughs> lie in a bed with several whores and um, do some really great paintings and lose some Apple Macs. And then you're going to do the, the film roll as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we'll begin <laughs> filming. <laughs> the That's just a warm up. <laughs> um, so yeah, do you have any good wishes for me? Any hopes for me? Is this what the, the hell is for? Yeah, I've got to re it though, because I've got a sore, sore scalp and I've had to put this <laughs> noose on it and it killed the dye. So I've got to go back to the, go back to the man and get myself dyed a bit greyer. And um, where can you get crack pipes on Amazon? <laughs> I, I'm going to take the fifth on that. No, oh, yeah. no comment. All right, mate. I wouldn't know. <laughs> do you hope I do really well, Alice? Yes, of course. I'm sure it's going to be a hit. <laughs> Thank you. I actually am filled with hope about this, and, and, and that is because you know, really interesting thing. Like you're trending right now on Twitter, and we looked at it before we started, and you're trending because America has just woken up, mm -hmm. and they've seen this in America, and Americans, particularly the conservative side of the spectrum, are absolutely over the moon that, as you call it. Hunter's truth can mm. finally be told. We all have a truth. It, yeah. There isn't the truth. There's my truth. Yeah. Hunter's truth. And, and, and Hunter's truth is going to become my truth. And, and he, <laughs> even here in, in the UK, um, it's doing really well on Daily Mail. And I said to you like, earlier, have a look at some of the comments under there. I can't read comments. No, I, but, I, I can't read anything from anyone because I want, I want to go. <laughs> but the reason I'm going, to, I'm going to read out a couple of comments now is because you know, if anyone talks about abuse in social media, try looking at your timeline for five minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised you don't look. But the outside of the sewer that is Twitter, mm. well, don't forget, if they ruled the world, we'd have President, we'd have President Hillary Clinton, we'd remain in the European Union, Jeremy Corbyn would, would be running Britain. The complete Jeff outside, Epstein would still be alive. Exactly, <laughs> completely out of touch with reality. But people are really, really happy for you. There's one here. Um, Vet342 Manchester, brilliant gone, Lawrence, stick it to them. Marianne369, all I've ever heard is for Lawrence Fox is to speak common sense and the truth. It just goes to show you how hard the left and the social media try has become that you get called extreme just for having opinions that most people agree with. Go for it, Lawrence. Oh. Someone here, this might be you or someone who's already on crack. I paid all these people to Lawrence for, P for Prime Minister. I mean, yes. I think they're already on the crack pipe. But, <laughs> <How dare you? laughs> but the point is, outside of Twitter, and in the real world, loads of people support you. Like when we're on these marshes, they support you. Yeah. And the Americans now are going to absolutely love you for this. Well, I love the Americans, and we need a special relationship back with them. Mm. It's really important because you know they're going, they're really going through it at the moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, I had some meetings, actually, some good meetings with some Americans this week. And really and, exciting. Know, the, we need the, we need a, an organised fight back. It doesn't necessarily need to be political on a few levels because mm. what you're trying to do is you're going to trying to give the people mm. to not make them feel ashamed to have a normal point yeah. of view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I really, really agree. And I'm really, really excited about the fact that, you know, Boris Johnson just come back from America and has got no trade deal because Biden doesn't care about Britain. There's no special relationship left to speak of. He's a globalist. He's shilling up to the European Union because they're all globalist shills. What's going to happen out of this is my, my real conviction is that you and the conservative movement in America are going to form this new special relationship, a freedom of speech special relationship. And I think it's going to be brilliant for the movement transatlantic global movement of free speech with you as a, as a primary Brit. I think it's an amazing opportunity. And this movie, I think, is going to be a great catalyst. And it's a real, real positive moment. I'm really, really hopeful that some common sense is going to shine through these clouds of wokery. 
Oh, I love it. I'm crying yeah. behind these glasses. Yeah. Leo, you don't care at all, do you? No, I can't wait to see this film now. My mates have been talking about <laughs> it. Like, it just sounds, uh, it sounds amazing. I'm going to get I'm gonna get some popcorn and beers in. And, well, you're going to have a screening. Yeah, man. Think, yeah, sure. yeah, you're going to have a screening. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I'm not invited to the screening, then it, I, it's not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> but on, a, on a serious note, I mean, it does. Hunter Biden is just the, the sort of archetypal story of something that was buried by big tech and like the the billionaire oligarchs yeah. that run big tech yeah. have got far too much see far too much influence and like you were saying earlier Alice, they act as uh, publishers yeah. uh, but they're they're legislated as as platforms so i mean i'm not often in favor of government intervention in business but i think with big tech government regulation is essential mm. to ensure that they they behave fairly and freely and also on a, on a financial level that uh, you know they stop harvesting people uh, harvesting people's data for, for mm. money and people see a return, people can choose mm. the levels of data How access and, and get, mm. a, get a dividend mm. from their own data. Mm. They're almost more powerful than government though at this moment. I yes. mean, we know how they literally took down the President of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. This is, that's the level we're at, that these the and uncontrollable, the, monolithic power from Google. Mm from Twitter and Silicon Valley. Mm. And the Taliban remain on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, on, a, on a lighter note, have you practiced your Hunter Biden accent yet? No, I tend to dig into it. Um, I tend to fall into it when I need to fall into it. And right. you know, I'm not one of these people that walk around set in character. Yeah. I've, I've, wor I've worked with a few of those and it turns a 12 hour shooting day into what feels like a 12 year shooting day. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're just sat there uh, <laughs> and they're walking around going, I love you, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and you're like, and they go, are you happy with that? And they're like, no, I want to go again. I love you. I want to be with you. <laughs> and you're like, so you're exactly the same as the last time you did. I, I usually do what I do. I do one take and they go, are you happy? And I go, did I get all the lines right? And they go, yeah. And I go, yeah, let's move on. Yeah. You know, if you can't do it first time, what's the point of doing it? Can we hear, can we hear a bit of... Where? Yeah, can we have a little sneak peek? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Hunter S. Biden. <laughs> Uh, you think your position exists to provide these, uh, these people ex exist to provide you with position. I feel these people, you, your position exists to provide the people with freedom. And I go, sure, I go to make sure they have it. And if that lot over there start taking, oh my, <laughs> start taking my laptop. <laughs> um, I, we've got to just have, Alice, you're going to, I want you to finish up the thing today. I want you to say something, um, I, whatever you want to say. Well, there's always hope for the future. We're the resistance. Keep going. Um, keep fighting. Um, we pray we shall overcome this. That's all. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching. See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>